Let me in a word of prayer as we get started. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much for your your awesomeness. You are a God of wonders beyond this galaxy. It's just an awe-inspiring thought. We know that we serve a God who is so much greater than us, yet, yet cares for us personally as a friend. We can go to you and pour out our hearts to you. Praise and also in in requests and, and when we're struggling, we can we can call to you and you hear us. So we thank you for that. We thank you for this opportunity we have to tonight look at your word, look at um, this opportunity we have to to stand for you, and, and I pray that your spirit would, would guide and speak through me tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. My name is Andy Hickson. I am an elder here at Gospel Life Church, and um, I grew up in the church. So I've been here pretty much my whole life. I've been going off to school for a little bit. Um, it's interesting. Keith and I were just talking about this this weekend. We had an elders retreat, a leadership retreat, not just an elder retreat, because Keith's not an elder yet, but leadership retreat. And Keith and I were kind of discussing the fact that we, I went to school for ministry, went to the Word of Life Bible Institute for two years, and then I finished at Davis College. Keith went to Grove City for business. And he ended up in ministry, and I ended up in business. So it just works that way sometimes. We've got a sovereign. And that kind of, I, I work for a company called Carbonite, and this is kind of what got me thinking about this subject about a month ago. One of our customers came to us, and he said, we were thinking through our product, and, and they, I can share later about Carbonite if you are interested, but, but we put this coating on metal. And we do this for a customer, and this customer then sells this product all over the world. But it really only works well if it has Carbonite on it. And we're pretty much the only people that supply this type of coating. So they were thinking through, like, well, what happens if we can no longer get carbonite? Like, we're in a jam. You know, we're, we're going to be in trouble because we won't be able to sell our product. And so they were thinking, kind of worst case scenario, what happens if something goes, goes like we don't plan? We don't plan on going away. We have to keep offering this service. But all of us... Very few of us plan for our crisis, right? If we did, it wouldn't be a crisis. And that's kind of the point. Crises are usually unexpected things that, that, that come into our lives that, that we didn't plan for. Rahm Emanuel, former mayor of Chicago, said one time, never let a good crisis go to waste. Was he wrong in saying that? Mm. We're not going to get political. I'm not going to talk about whether he was right or wrong specifically there tonight. But I want to get you thinking. Um, President Kennedy also remarked once that when written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters, one representing danger and the other represents opportunity. And so every crisis is at the same time an opportunity. So we need to think through the gospel. And how can we use a crisis as an opportunity? And you know, one fun thing about me, I'm a, I'm a Marvel Comics fan. See, I got my, my shirt on and everything. But I'm a bigger fan of the gospel of Christ. So I love talking about comics. Anything like comics, I'll talk about comics. But, but I also love to talk about the gospel. So um, if you have your Bibles and you want to turn there, it's up here, though, as well. Colossians chapter 4. Um, verses 2 through 6. It says, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly, as I should. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. So Paul's writing this, and, and I, I like, I usually use the ESV, but I, I like the way the NIV describes verse 5, where it says, make the most of every opportunity. 
the ESV says, make the most of your time. So it's, it's really the same thing. You know, your, your time is your opportunity. And we are called. Paul tells us, like, you have an opportunity, make the most of it. And what is he speaking about specifically here? That I may proclaim clearly the mystery of, mystery of Christ. It's the gospel. That, that is the opportunity that we are called to take advantage of. So how does, how does Paul start this passage? He says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. So right now, our world, our country, seems like it's kind of been turned upside down, right? We are a year into a pandemic that I'm not going to go into politics here, I promise that. But when you look at the culture, look at the world, look at our neighbors around us, family, I mean, you can honestly say things are turned upside down. It's, it's a crisis. We are, we are in the midst of, of a crisis. And maybe it's not specifically the pandemic. Maybe it's it's the economy as the result of that. Maybe you, lost, you know somebody that lost a job. Maybe you um, can't see your grandparents because they're in a nursing home and it's, it's, they're in, in bad health. There's all kinds of crises happening around us. And when we are in the midst of a crisis, we are more willing to open up about issues uh, because we, we realize how precious life is. We, we, our priorities get checked, right? And we, we see a crisis. And we, we've all experienced hardships. We've all experienced things that go wrong. And, and usually when those things happen, we step back and say, man, what, what is really important here? You know, I'd encourage you to pray. There's a, there's a couple in our church whose um, family has just had a baby and, and the mom is, is in bad shape, but they're not believers, and they're in crisis right now because the mom was close to death. She's, she's doing better, so I appreciate your prayers for um, Tom and Laura Brugier's family member, but we're praying specifically that God uses this, this crisis in their lives to draw them to himself. But it starts with prayer. We, we need to pray and plan. Like, just like my customer wanted to plan for the worst case scenario. We need to plan. Like, okay, we might not think bad things are going to happen, but, but they will, inevitably. We live in a fallen, sinful world. Things are going to happen. So we need to be ready to take advantage of these opportunities for the gospel. Quick example that, that I try to put into practice when I'm, when I'm preaching, right? Um, I also manage a farm, so I'm involved in a lot of stuff. I stay pretty busy. But on this farm, we have some custom customers, and we, I deliver hay to these customers. And I was delivering to a customer, and I was trying to find the time for delivering, and she's like, ah, she's like, you got to do it before this day because I'm having a major surgery on my, I think it was a knee, and um, she was kind of worried about it. And I took that opportunity. I said, talked about it a little bit, but like, be okay if I pray for you. You know, during this time, and she's not a believer, and she she's like, yeah, you, you can do that. So I was able to show just some some basic care for for her as she was in whether it was a crisis or not. It was a it was a it was a difficult time for her, and I was able to use that opportunity to to pray for her and pray with her. You'd be surprised what kind of opportunities you will get by just offering to pray for somebody or pray with somebody. It's not a common practice in our culture anymore. And some people could be offended. That's okay. You can be offended for, for the gospel. That's there there it's really no greater thing to to get people offended by, right? Second thing we can we can learn is that we need to care. So you start with prayer. I did not come up with these these three specific items, but um, the next thing is, is care. So when we come to somebody in crisis or a situation where people are in crisis, people really aren't interested in what you have to say to them most times until they know that you actually care for them. And it says here's when someone's house is on fire, you don't necessarily take the time to, to share the gospel with them, right? 
you can, but it's, it's probably not the best time. You, know, you want to get them out of the house, help them with their crisis, and show that you care. And that's going to open, open doors for the gospel. And it's not unbiblical to help people, right? Scripture con- consistently reminds us to care for people in need. And Zechariah 7, 9, and 10, 9 through 10 is clear about the importance of taking care of the widow, the orphan, the sojourner, the poor, those that, those that are, are in crisis, those that are in need. We really need to take care of them. Matthew 25, Jesus reminds us that we care for the naked, the hungry, the sick, the prisoner, and the more. When we do that, who are we really serving? We're serving Christ. So it's not that we're just trying to find a way to, you know, weasel our way in to, to present the gospel. That's that's part of it. But we're we're called biblically <laughs> to, to share, right? We're called to, to to care for for those that are in need. What could that look like? You know, ordering some food for for somebody in need, Send, bring groceries to somebody. Helping them mow the grass. Uh, you know, I, I offered to to this this customer of mine, you know, knowing that they're probably going to be off their feet for a bit. Like, hey, is there anything that I can I can help out with if if you're, you know, if you need it? Just show, showing that I care. And uh, you know, her family was taking care of things that wasn't needed, but trying to take advantage of an opportunity to to just show that I care. And that thing about going where the needs are as well. Sometimes. We live in a bubble and, and are, we're willing to, to help out our neighbor, but our neighbors don't seem to have any problems. Um, I think about going to where the needs are. I think back um, Keith and Jerry, and Matt, the only ones here. We, we went down to near New Orleans after Katrina happened. And we just decided, like, man, these people are really hurting. Let's get down there. So we packed up on the church bus and we got a group of like 15 guys and we drove down there and we spent a week, you know, doing rebuilding and clearing out junk and just, just serving people that were in need. You know, I think about what happened in Texas, you know, a few weeks ago. Part of me was like, hey, Bryce, <laughs> let's get a bunch of supplies. I'm just going to drive down there and start fixing people's plumbing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Where I know one of the, the goals of this group is to get ready and start getting prepared for opportunities to serve in the community. And whether that involves short-term missions, I don't know exactly how it's going to play out. But we want to do this. We want to be able to, to reach out and physically help people that are, that are in need. You know, if, you, if you know of people that, that are in need, a neighbor, whatever, let the leaders of this group know. Because I think we have a pretty potent force of guys here that would be willing and able to do some some pretty crazy work that would possibly open the door open the door for for the gospel. The last thing that we can't ignore though is is sharing. And people are open to conversations about sharing if they know that you care. You know, I, I had a chance when I was in high school to um, go on some trips with Habitat for Humanity. And it was a great opportunity to, to go and help people that were really, truly in need. And I'm against, or I'm for alleviating global, global poverty and, and providing houses for everybody. But if we, if we say we have to fully meet the need before we can start sharing the gospel, we're never gonna, for example, fix global poverty before we can start sharing Christ, right? We have to prioritize the sharing of the gospel. So you meet the immediate need, but we have to be planning to share the gospel. I think of um, the best example that we can really, really look to is, is in Acts. We look at what the early church was doing. In Acts chapter 4, you had leaders who were um, detained and threatened, yet what did they do? They shared Christ. And as a result of their sharing, it was right after that that the church had extremely huge growth. 3,000 members in, in the day um, were, were added to the church. Next five, leaders were being beaten for sharing Christ. 
and told not to do so. What did they do? Sorry, we can't stop sharing the gospel. Like We're going to share the gospel. And they share Christ. Stephen was killed in Acts chapter 7. What, was his, what were his dying words? He was sharing Christ. In the midst of this unforeseen crisis that, that came upon him, that, that brought him to the point of death and, and into death, and yet he was sharing Christ. Next 16, you know, Paul and Silas are in prison. I'm sure they weren't planning to go to prison. They weren't, you know, they were planning on things probably going better, but they ended up in prison. It didn't discourage them. It seemed like they were joyful and sharing Christ. And the church grew in incredible ways as a result of people being willing to, despite horrible circumstances and crisis all over the place, they were willing to, to share Christ. So that's my challenge tonight. Pray for opportunities. Pray, as, as Paul calls us to, for the gospel to be real in our lives and to be shared powerfully and clearly um, through our lives. Care for people. Show people that, that you really do care for them. Don't do it just as a, as a token you know, event, but, but actually show, like, I really do care about you. I'm willing to sacrifice for you as, as, a, as a neighbor and a friend. But make sure we're, we're not just doing that, but we're doing what really matters, um, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we changed the name of this church to Gospel Life Church because we wanted that to be our focus. We wanted the gospel of Christ to be what we're focused on. And it's very easy to get caught up in politics or sports or comic books or, or whatever and talk about things that are not as important. And we can, we can talk about those things. That's fine. And God has given us the ability to have passions and enjoy this world that he's given us, but our priority needs to be in the gospel of Christ. So a couple questions to consider as we break out into our groups. Um, the leaders should have these as well. But what are some crises? crises that's a tough word, right? How do you say referral crisis? Crises that we are, we or our neighbors are likely to face. What are some practical things we can do to care for our neighbors and share the gospel? in the midst of the crisis. So let me finish in prayer, and then we'll, we'll break up to our groups. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to look to your word. We thank you for the crisis, crises that, that come into our lives. We are we are blessed to be in a country that, that has so much. We are so blessed physically, financially, we don't have the same types of problems that, that many other countries do, yet there are crises that come to us. So we pray that we would be ready. We pray that we would be able to take advantage of those, those times when things don't go as we plan. Because none of us plan for bad things to happen, yet living in a sinful, fallen world, they, they do. So we pray that we would be ready. We pray that we would be filled with the knowledge of your word and that we would be powerfully used in sharing your gospel. Jesus, in my prayer. Thank you.